well, we're gonna do a five minute video. So I just did a one minute on what do you do when someone hands you a contract, right? And the context is you're an employee and either on day one, right, when you're getting the job, they hand you a contract. Sometimes it'll be in the negotiation before you start. Sometimes it'll literally be on your first week. They'll be like, oh, hey, we need you to fill out some paperwork. Second scenario is halfway through the job. They just call you into an office, maybe individually or maybe as a group, and they say, hey, everyone. Now, that happens a lot where a company is growing, and then maybe they get a new lawyer, and the new lawyer says, wait, you didn't have your employees sign any agreements? And so they make a new employment agreement. And so maybe before it was just a handshake, uh, an exchange of emails. Now they're gonna make it formal, okay? That's the middle of the job. And then the third scenario is on your way out the door at the end of the job, again, maybe you've already quit or maybe you're getting fired and they hand you a contract to sign. Now they have different contexts, right? The first one is the job you're gonna start. The second one is the job you're already doing. And the third one is the job you're leaving. Different scenarios, but here's the point. In all three of those scenarios, and frankly, any time someone hands you a contract, you have the time to take it home, to read it, to think about it, and to go get advice from a lawyer. There is no circumstance where they say, you have to sign it now, or you're not allowed to leave this room without signing it, or I need it signed by the end of the day. And if they do that, they're putting pressure on you that is fake, it's fake pressure. Now. Listen, they just might be jerks, but they're really showing you who they are. If that's the way they do business, if that's the way they want to bully their employees, maybe you don't want to work there. All right. So the, the real point of the story is you absolutely have the right to take your time to think about it, to negotiate. Some contracts are negotiable. Some contracts aren't. Uh, typically, the higher your position is in a company, the more money you're making, the more you're going to want to get a lawyer involved and the more that you will be able to push back and negotiate some of the terms of that agreement. And, and here's the point, the real point. Contracts, and you guys, if you've watched any of my videos, you probably heard me say this. Contracts are not for when everyone's getting along and everyone's happy and everyone's making money and everyone's like high-fiving and, and everyone's great. Contracts are for when things are bad, right? When things are bad, that's when you go back and you look at your employment agreement. And what you don't want is things are bad, you go back and look at your employment agreement and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I agreed to that because it's enforceable, right? And especially here in Florida, contracts are generally enforceable. I use the word generally because you know there's exceptions to every rule, but the point of the story is most of the time, a contract, unless there's some sort of gross problem with it, will be enforced by a judge, which really means that someone will sue you for breach of contract, they'll attach to the contract that you signed to the complaint, you'll get in front of a judge, and then the judge will say, yes, it's a valid breach of contract claim, and then that's where all the other bad things can happen. Maybe there's an attorney's fee clause that you're going to have to pay the bad guy's attorney's fees. Maybe there's a non-compete. Now, this is a true story. So lady gets a job and on day one, she asks them, she's like, hey, do you guys have a contract? And they were disorganized and they were like, uh, no, you know, we're, we're going to get around to that. So that was red flag number one. So after a few months, she realizes that this is not the right fit. Like these people are disorganized. Like the fact that they didn't have their stuff together on day one, it played itself out. So on, let's call it six months in, she's like, this isn't working for me, I'm quitting. And they came to her on the last day, on her quitting day, and said, here's a contract, we need you to sign it. And she did not read it really well. She did not go get a lawyer. She did not take the time. They pressured her. They said that she had to sign it on that day. They literally had her in the conference room and they said, you gotta sign this right now and we're not letting you out. So she signs it. They, they did pay her, that's a question, right? You have to have consideration for every contract. So consideration means, like if I give you a contract, but I'm, not, I'm asking you to give me something, but I'm not giving you anything in exchange, then that's not actually a contract under the law. That's law school 101, literally first semester law school, they teach you the elements of a contract. I won't go too deep into it, but what they did on day, the last day, they did pay her out. So they, they gave her something. They didn't pay her much. And later on, when she's going back and looking at it, they made her sign a five-year worldwide, industry-wide non-compete, meaning that the job that she had had for the last 16 years, she couldn't do for the next five years. So she goes, she, she has a little bit of money in her pocket. She sits on the beach for a couple months. She gets bored. What does she do? She decides that she's going to start doing her old job again but she's just gonna do it for friends and family. She's not gonna advertise, it's gonna be super low key. Well, she goes and opens up her shop 
they sue her a week later. Like they were keeping tabs. They were waiting on her to slip up. So they sue her and th unfortunately, they had a valid claim for breach of contract because she was actually breaching the contract. Now, I, I, I mean, I asked her, I said, listen, if you had come to me, like we had a time machine and we could go back in time, when they handed you the contract and you said, listen, I need to talk to a lawyer and they, they lie and they say, no, you have to sign it now. You say, no, let me out of here. I'm gonna go talk to a lawyer. I would have charged her 1,500 to $2,000 to review and negotiate that agreement. She ended up spending $150,000 on litigation and all she ended up getting from the litigation was they agreed to narrow the non-compete from five years worldwide, can't do anything. They narrowed it to a shorter time span, a more specific geography and a narrower definition of the non-compete. But that cost her $150,000. So everyone, um, please, I know this is an issue that a lot of you are facing. Leave a comment below if this has ever happened to you. If you have any questions, reach out. I'm happy to chat. Thank you.